It's Tuesday, and that means it's time to get technical on Business Day. Every week at this time, we speak with some of the world's top technical analysts to give you the jump on where the markets may be headed. Joining us today is J.C. Peretz. He's president and founder of Eagle Bay Capital. He's also editor of AllStarCharts.com. J.C. joins us uh, from New York, and J.C. will always be known as the natural gas rip your face off trading guy, but thank you very much for joining us, JC. Uh, as you know, we often uh, start this discussion with uh, a look at your toolbox or the toolbox of the analysts that we're talking to. What's your favorite technical tools that you use when you're looking at markets? Sure. Well, I mean, we, we look at momentum, we look at seasonality, we look at a lot of intermarket analysis, but at the end of the day, we let, we let price dictate our actions. It's nice to see momentum confirming trends. It's nice to see, um, you know, other areas uh, around the globe that typically signal risk appetite, um, also participating in bull markets and things like that. Um, but at the end of the day, we really focus on price because that's the only thing that's going to pay us. Now, uh, one of the things just talking about price is going to be interest rates. Uh, we're we're going to go through a series of charts. The first one is the U.S. 10-year bond. I think we're looking at both price and yield. A lot of people were looking at yields to move higher. Here we're looking at price. Of course, uh, it turned around and did the other thing. Prices up, yields down. What's this chart telling you right now? It's very interesting. U U.S. Treasury bond yields are at the lows of the year. Um, Treasury bond prices are making new highs. Those were the 10-year futures that you just showed on television, um, and they're signaling to us that Treasury bond prices are probably heading higher. And it's not just here in the United States. We're seeing it in Europe, too. I Italian government bonds are at new 52-week lows. Spanish government bonds, new 52-week lows. Um, look at German bonds, uh, new lows for the year. And uh, their bonds are soaring, and we're seeing the exact same thing here in the States. JC, how low can the 10 year yield go? Well, last summer, when the stock markets around the globe bottomed out and Euro European stocks started, started ripping, U.S. stocks started ripping, precious metals were rallying, base metals rallying, um, that's when yields started heading higher as well. Um, and then as U.S. stocks have continued higher this year, uh, bond yields have essentially rolled over. So I really don't see any reason why yields can't get back below that 140 level where they bottomed out last summer. Um, European bond yields are already doing that. So it looks like that's where we're headed. Um, as far as risk management uh, wise goes, which at the end of the day is the most important thing, we really want to watch this 175 level on the uh, on the 10 year yields. As long as we're below that, it looks like bond prices are heading higher. JC, I want to turn back to natural gas, partly because I just want to say the rip your face off rally. Uh, and have some fun with that. But again, I want to talk to you about the price has moved up. You expect more. Let us, let us know what your thoughts are there. Yeah, new 52 week highs. You can't argue with price, right? Um, I was on your show about a year ago, and I, the, the ratio of crude oil to natural gas was really getting parabolic. Um, you know, at that point, we were approaching 50 to 1. We did uh, anticipate a new low in natural gas prices, which really took that particular ratio uh, up to 54 to 1. So for your viewers, you know, the, the, the way to visualize it is that the price of crude oil was essentially trading at 54 times the price of natural gas. And historically, the average price since 1990 is 10 times uh, natural gas. So um, the question we asked ourselves was, you know, is this really a new normal? Is this 50 times natural gas something that we're, we gotta have to get used to? Is this something realistic going forward and we were in the camp that that wasn't the case at all that it would revert to the mean and that's essentially what's been happening over the last year we're now just above 20 to 1 in crude oil or natural gas ratio again from a high of 54 to 1 and that mean down at 10 to 1 has been screaming at us for the last year i think it still is um that's been our target since day one and i don't see any reason uh to change that at this point. JC, you can get to that target by gas going up, but you can also get to it, of course, by oil going down. So what's your forecast for the price of oil? That's right, Francis. So that, that's actually a great question. So oil is just a sloppy mess. It's <laughs> been a mess for two, three years, right? It's just chopping around in this big range and 
I don't see any evidence of that really changing. So oil can keep bouncing around and natural gas can continue to rally and that's going to that's going to help that ratio. As far as natural gas on an absolute level goes, um, you know, right now we're above 4. We want to make sure we stay above 4. That was a big breakout in our opinion. So the next level is definitely 5 bucks um, in natural gas, which is the 2010-2011 highs, so that's some pretty key resistance. And then after that, you're looking at a level between 6 and about 640, which represents the highs in 2009, but also the 38.2% Fibonacci retracement um, from the entire move down from the 2008 top. So that's a big level. Uh, JC, I know uh, you have some views on ETFs. One in particular I want to ask you about, the iShares MSCI Singapore Index Fund. What does the performance of the ETF tell you? What does it tell you about the region? Yeah, well, I mean, the region's really on fire. I mean, that's the hottest region in the world, no doubt about it. It's no secret that Japan has been on fire. Obviously, the Japanese yen weakening helps that. But it's not just a Japanese story. It, it, it's, in our opinion, that whole region. Look at the Philippines, up 20% year-to-date. Look at Indonesia, up 15% year-to-date. Singapore has really been consolidating in a... In a beautiful range in our opinion uh, for the last five six months or so we've been waiting patiently it looked as though that breakout was coming in early february but after the super bowl when uh, all these european stocks and emerging markets got crushed there just weren't enough buyers out there to get singapore going in our opinion that was probably a blessing in disguise because all that it created was an even bigger base we've been basing for an extra couple of months so as they say the bigger the base the higher in space right we broke out uh, above 14 last thursday and um, we, we're holding that level. So as long as we can hold 14, I think Singapore is heading higher with the region. Um, you know, we can see prices as high as $16. JC, I don't think I've ever heard that. The bigger the base, the higher the space. Uh, I'm going to use that if I can. Thanks very much for joining us this morning. Sure. Full disclosure, I didn't come up with it. I, got, okay. I, I definitely got that from my technical predecessor. For sure. That's okay. I'll, I'll uh, credit you anyway. Thanks for joining us, JC. Thanks, Francis. That's J.C. Peretz, is president of Eagle Bay Capital and editor of allstarcharts.com.